A deadly E. coli outbreak in Colorado and several other states has now ignited a legal battle. At least two lawsuits have been filed against McDonald's after that outbreak was linked to their quarter pounders. Well, attorneys tell us they are likely to see more lawsuits to come. The outbreak has sickened dozens of people and led to the death of one person in Mesa County. Now California-based Taylor Farms is recalling the yellow onions that it sold to McDonald's because of possible E. coli contamination. The FDA is working to confirm if onions were the source of the outbreak. And looking closer here, this is not the first time that Taylor Foods has potentially caused people to get sick. So take a look at the search from the USDA. You can see dozens of recalls and public health alerts for that company for several years there. Denver 7 investigative reporter Natalie Chuck's been digging into Taylor Farms today. And she joins us now live. So Natalie, that is a whole lot of recalls, very eye-opening. So what repercussions could Taylor Farms face if their onions are linked to all of these cases? Yeah, I mean, we took that exact question directly to the FDA, but the answer might not really be what you would expect. I asked if Taylor Farms could face any fines or other consequences, but this recall is what FDA calls firm initiated. That essentially means it was voluntary, unlike if an inspector uncovered some sort of violation. This is a statement we got back from the FDA. It reads in part, the FDA's role in a firm initiated recall is to work with a recalling firm to facilitate the orderly and prompt removal of or correction to a violative product in the marketplace. The FDA also assesses a company's recall strategy and monitors the effectiveness of the recall. The FDA also said it is too early in the investigation to speculate what might have happened here. We did reach out to Taylor Farms for comment, but we have not heard back. So Natalie, I'm guessing that means there's not going to be fines in this case. Yeah, not in this case. It doesn't seem like it as of right now, but companies involved in foodborne illnesses have paid fines before. We know that Chipotle paid a $25 million criminal fine several years ago after a norovirus outbreak. But in that case, the Department of Justice found employees were not following food safety policies. So a bit different than what we know right now, yeah. at least. All right, investigative reporter Natalie Chuck, thank you for your work on this tonight, Natalie. So going in depth, the CDC linked this outbreak to McDonald's quarter pounders through tracing data. That's similar to contact tracing for COVID. When people get sick with E. coli, public health officials collect information like their age, demographics, and the food that they ate in the week before they got sick. This helps officials identify the source of the outbreak. Looking closer, we wanted to know how else unsafe foods are identified. The FDA says the other two primary reasons recalls are issued is if a manufacturer or distributor finds a potential hazard, they're required to notify the government within 24 hours. Or if USDA inspectors identify issues in routine inspections, sample test results or surveillance. And amid these food recalls, of course, people want to know how they can make sure their families are safe. The FDA offers a recall subscription service on their website. You can choose to be notified of all recalls or specific food recalls on a daily or a weekly basis. And if you have recently eaten a McDonald's quarter pounder, so they suggest you monitor for symptoms like a high fever, vomiting, diarrhea. The CDC says if you start to feel sick, just contact your health care provider. McDonald's has temporarily stopped selling quarter pounders in Colorado. The chain's stock also fell after the outbreak was announced. But Denver 7 Sam Pena sat down with an economist who believes the impact on McDonald's will likely be short lived. This is part of their conversation. Is this something you know that uh, will have maybe uh, any sort of underlying impacts you think for the consumer in the future? I think so. I think we'll public confidence or consumer confidence is kind of shaken up by, by this news uh, that how come it even happened in the first place. What sort of habits do we see from the general Colorado consumer? I, I think there hasn't been a big change because of pandemic for our food habits as such. I think we are more into taking food at home rather than eating in, in uh, but then fast foods are excellent in that because you just go stand in the driveway uh, and get uh, uh, get for your food to go and you don't have to sit there so that way mcdonald wendy's burger king they do a good job of taking your your food giving you fast and you just take a home or i eat it in the car so um, I think that will continue. That hasn't really stopped because of pandemic or even with this news. Um, and uh, yeah, I think I think we will be back to our old ways.